Welcome back to the next five years. On this edition, we'll be delving into how business is looking at new ways to keep and capture customers. Well, for more on this, let's go to Bernard and our panel. Thanks, Fazia. And our guests for the panel are Carmen Becker, Partner, Customer Brand and Marketing Advisory with KPMG, Holly Kramer, Non-Executive Director with Woolworths and Australia Post, Naomi Simpson, Co-Founder of The Big Red Group. Welcome to the program. I might start with you, Naomi. Uh, perhaps you could tell me about the significant shifts in customer behaviour that you're seeing at the moment. Look, I see two big shifts. One is that the customer is more fickle than they've ever been before. And I say that with respect, but it's, it's a distracting world out there. So even if they want to engage with your brand, online they literally might get persuaded or introduced to new things on the way to your brand. So the digital marketing journey and brand journey is really challenged. The second thing is that customers want to know what you stand for. Um, what is your... Uh, community, your social responsibility, that your stance on the environment, your sustainability, and they will seek to understand what you represent and what you stand for. So we see that customers are far more inquiring and that they're far more considered when they do make a purchase and that loyalty can never be taken for granted. Holly, how does large businesses put the customer at the centre of everything that they do? Well, I think that is what almost, I would say, or every large business Australia today is trying to do. And, and it's really challenging, but without a doubt, it starts at the top because a lot of companies will pay lip service to customer centricity. Um, I think it's when boards and executive teams realise that, that if, if you're not on top of what Naomi was saying and understanding the change in customers, you, you, won't, um, you won't drive that true centricity. Also using tools. You know, there are the surveys that you get, Brendan, when you buy something and they mm. say, would you recommend this company? Um, that's actually very effective if it's used well in of the company because you, you spread it through the whole of the organization and everyone gets to hear and understand what they're doing and the impact that has on the customer. Um, and so I think um, the third thing that companies are really trying to do is figure out how to listen. So how do you listen to customers beyond um, the frontline staff or the market research department? How do you get that information spread through the organization? That's what's really going to start to make a difference. We might come back to that, but uh, Carmen, um, how, how, uh, how is business personalizing the relationship with customers today? Um, mass personalization or personalization at scale is absolutely critical for business today. Um, it's enabled by two things, really. The first one is technology. So being able to not only look at a broad state customer journey, but actually the micro journey that Naomi referred to earlier of every single customer. And if the tech is able to do that, then actually we can achieve mass personalization. This leads to another issue. How do, how do you actually build brand loyalty and trust with, with a company, with a, uh, uh, with a business, for example, with the customers. How do you do that? I remember, I'll throw it open to the panel. Yeah, I remember years ago when, you know, we started an online business and I remember a customer calling saying, I'm on your website and about to make a purchase. How do I know you're real? <laughs> and I said, of course I'm real. I'm the CEO. And then, then this woman said, well, how do I know you're not the janitor? Well, actually, I was working from home and I was the janitor <laughs> as well, so I did all the jobs. But in that moment, I realised to build trust is to build emotional connection. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is actually to get beyond your website. Have, have a role to play in your community and to meet people. And I've actually seen that more and more, even with really large organisations, that when they're out and about they, they contribute to local community. People feel that they have, they know who they are, and they become, they have a face. They're no longer faceless. And for me, that's materially important in, in terms of building brand essence. You can't be faceless. I think it's partly that, but I also think in some ways it's simpler. It is actually the way you build trust with anyone and anything. It is doing what you say. Yes. So if I go to your site and I order something and I expect to get it like I saw it at that date, being able to do that consistently again and again is really important. I think the other is one of you mentioned transparency. From a big corporate perspective, transparency is absolutely critical. And I would call it um, you know, sort of radical transparency. Companies getting better and better and better at just being honest about what they're doing and why. Carmen, is there any difference between loyalty and trust with a company and loyalty and trust with a brand? 
Loyalty and trust with a brand is driven through um, integrity and Australians, um, integrity is very essential to Australians in scaling or, or um, marking customer experience. So companies that have high integrity, according to Australians, are companies that people want to go back to. To gain integrity, you not just have to have transparency, um, you don't just have to ha do what you say you will, but you also have to make sure your brand follows its purpose. So why does the brand exist? What does it do? What does it, how does it help society? How does it help sustainability? I, I want to ask examples of brands that get it so right. Do you have an idea or anyone in the panel? Can you cite so any examples? A great purpose is always speaking about contribution. It's not about you, it's not about your enterprise, it's about how you made the world a slightly better place. And at the Big Red Group, we shift the way people experience life. And people get that. They kind of go, oh, that's about intimacy. That's about we get to do things that we've always wanted to do on our bucket list. So uh, there's many great um, examples of purpose. The challenge then is not the, the why you're doing it, but the how you do it is equally important. So to the point of integrity, it is about the values and how you align people to say, this is also how we do business, not just why we do it, but it's about our contribution. And does it come from the top down to always. permeate the entire organisation? Carmen, would you um, have... What we're seeing is um, making employees your strongest brand ambassadors is key because your employees are the ones that really, if they can live the values, if they can understand the, the products, the purpose, the future of that company, they can help the customers make the right choices around that business. And you see companies that have very high employee um, recognition surveys. Uh, some of the best companies uh, in America in customer experience are also the best in employee experience. Those two things do go hand in hand. Well, they say there's a customer loyalty mirror. So those organisations who have high engagement will also be more profitable. Holly, I might ask you around the future of big retail businesses. What do you see out there uh, for these organisations? You're the one, Bernard, who sees the future. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. But I think from what we're seeing today, there's some things we can pretty, be pretty certain about. Customers form a relationship with brands they trust, companies they trust, retailers they trust, and they do it because they get that consistency experience and that personalisation so that retailer knows. So it won't be so much about I buy my food this type from here and that type from there and these clothes from here, that relationship with a retailer or, or an organisation who understands you, what you want, delivers it consistently, makes things convenient for you, you will buy more and more and more. So you may go buy this type of food but maybe you'll buy food for now, you'll buy food for later, you'll buy food and have it delivered to other places. So uh, I think that idea used to be called omni-channel but that idea that I can get what I want anywhere, anytime and a retailer I trust will deliver that to me. I think that's where we see things headed. I see the world differently. How's that? <laughs> so, the, re <laughs> I know. the reason why I see it differently is because there's an increasing role that social proof takes. Takes. So in other words, if I as an individual, I really trust my friends and my family to tell me what they think is important and if my experience is inconsistent with their experience, I really wonder what's going on. So social proof becomes increasingly important. Now I live in an online world so that's one thing when you do have customer intimacy and I remember saying to uh, Janine from Boost Juice, I said it's alright for you, you can at least eyeball the customers, I don't get to eyeball customers. So what becomes even more important for me? is yes it is social proof and how people speak about me but also it's about how I'm listening and then can adapt to whatever it is that they've suggested mm. so they become the advocates and actually the designers of what it is and then they become true advocates. I think that's a good point to bring uh, Carmen's view in here around striking the right balance between automation and human service. How do you actually strike that right balance as an organisation? Yeah, it's, it's interesting when you look at something like the Amazon Go concept in the US and, you know, you can take away the friction of shopping queues. Your Sunday afternoon uh, at, your, at your supermarket is no longer when you can just walk around, take things off the shelf and then scan your app at the end and off you go. 
What that enables, that frictionless digital experience in that store, enables the store staff to be completely focused on the customer and the customer's needs in that moment. And what we're seeing is a big trend for automation to enable an enhanced human interaction. Because the human interaction and the personal touch won't go away. People still want to have that. But what we can do with digital and automation is accentuate and make that the very best it can be and focus that on the real moments of truth that matter for the customer. And I, I think the customer has to actually believe that that's the purpose of the technology because I think customers are pretty savvy at sussing out when a company has invested in technology to take their own costs out of their business versus mm. technology that yeah. actually makes it a better experience for you. Yeah. And so um, lots of these technologies really are more about taking cost out than getting the customer experience right. I think a company absolutely has to make sure that it's doing both. And we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much to our panel, Carmen Becker, Holly Kramer and Naomi Simpson.